Back then in the days of World War II, Douglas DC-3 twin piston airliners were used in considerable amounts by the Soviet Union, which was under the license of the USSR as the Lisanov Li-2. After the war has ended, they switched to an improved version of a twin piston airliner, the Ilyushin Il-12, resulting in delicate Il-14. Manufacturing of both IL-12 and IL-14 was in enormous quantity as per the demand of usage by Soviet civil and military service, and by Soviet client states. So in this video, we are going through the history of IL-12 and IL-14. When it was crystal clear in 1943 that the Soviet Union had supremacy in the war, Aircraft designer Sergei Ilyushin initiated initial exploration for commercial aircraft for the post-war era. A few of the Ilyushin's engineers went to the state factory for inspection of Li 2's manufacturing at Tashkent. Ilyushin Il-12 was designed according to the ground up as a civil aircraft. This was a modified version of Li 2 in all manners and can use for short airfields as well. Initially, Ilyushin Il-12 was designed for 29 passengers and the range was up to 5,000 kilometers, or 3,100 miles, with a load factor of 14 passengers, and its cruise speed was 250 miles per hour, or 400 kilometers per hour. There were four M-88V supercharged radical engines, cabin pressurization, and the type of landing gear was a tricycle. In early 1944, permission was granted for the manufacturing of airliner after reviewed the report of design. Additional modification in the airliner IL-12 reduced power plants to two Charamsky, ACH-31 V-12 diesel engines. Seating capacity was also brought down to 27 with a takeoff capability of 1,420 kilowatts, or 1,900 HP. The first sample of IL-12 was seen in the air on 15 August 1946 at the completion of the war, and the model was ready in the fall of 1944. The pilot and co-pilot of the first flight were Vladimir Kakinaki and his brother Konstantin, as there were some malfunctions in the ACH-31 diesel engines. It was decided by Ilyushin to replace the diesel and power the aircraft with twin Shvetsov, Ash 82 FN, 14 cylinder two row air cooled radials, with the power of 1,380 kilowatts, or 1,850 HP, each. This new innovation was proven to be successful and was already in production. There were some modifications in the landing gear of the IL 12 prototype for its enhanced stability. After modifications, IL-12 initiated its first flight in January 1946. There was some vibration seen in the propeller of the prototype because of its design, and after reviewing, troubleshooting has been done to rectify this issue. Consequently, vibration got reduced and proven to be successful as compared to Li-2. Some trials were started in the summer of 1946 which were ended in the fall. Orders for the production of IL-12 had been started before the trials, with five pre-series machines used for the evaluation of operation in early 1947. It was observed by Westerns that IL-12's done a formation overflight of Moscow in 1947 and this aircraft was named, Coach, which is NATO reporting name. Aeroflot pilots had positive reviews for this aircraft as they were comfortable during the flight. Therefore, the manufacturing of the IL-12 was drastically rose up. Ilyushin engineers were concerned about the handling of the engine and looking for ways to further enhance the safety of aircraft if it could fly on a single engine. On the other hand, the production of IL-12 was in progress. Engineers were thinking about engines with more capable of handling with one engine. Engineers were thinking to do some modifications in the IL-12. 
They were considering a new wing with constant dihedral and no forward extension that was inboard of the engines. And more thickness with engines with fuel outboard of the wings. Additionally, little forward wing sweep of 3 degrees at quarter cord. For enhanced power capability, uprated ASH 82T radials, with a 1415 kilowatts, 1900 HP engine was installed. Further new settings were introduced in ASH 82T for a longer overhaul time of 500 hours in a coherent cruise. With all these modifications, IL-12 changed to IL-14. Everything from flap design to landing gear was redesigned and modified to improve its operation to feather efficiently, and landing gear to retract faster. More redundancy was added to avoid drag during one engine failure. Aerodynamics of cowlings was improvised for easy access during servicing and perfectly stowed to icing system in the down portion of cowlings. In the new IL-12 version, the cargo compartment and toiled moved to forward which was previously situated at the aft portion to shift the center of gravity at forward. To further improve and maintain yaw stability, a wider tail fin with leading edge fillet was fitted which also maintained engine out handling operation. In a related manner, there was no need for strut after the shifting of the center of gravity to forward. Previously, a strut was used to keep the aircraft from tipping back when the aircraft is parked. The electrical system of aircraft was also modified which can perform efficiently during unstable weather conditions. After final modifications and various alterations in IL-12, it was flying by Vladimir Kakinaki on 13 July 1950 for demonstration but after 15 minutes of takeoff, it had to stop because of some technical issue. Another prototype done its first flight on 1 October 1950 by Kakinaki. This flight went well and was decided for manufacturing in 1954 with its deliveries of the IL-14P in which P stands for passenger. It was seen that the improvised version of IL-12 proved to be successful in terms of handling, speed, range, and reliability. Both IL-12 and IL-14 were designed for 18 passengers at the initial time. Afterward, the seating capacity increased to 24, named IL-14P24. After some time, further modifications were added which leads to 28 and 32 seat configurations for short haul, high density flights which was without a galley, and named IL-1428 for 28 sits configurations, and IL-1432 for 32 sits configurations. Another term is introduced called IL-14PS and IL-14S for VIP aircraft with some extended range called IL-14SO. Seating capacity was between 5 to 8. Another version was IL-14SO that was designed for 18 passengers. These versions were manufactured in fewer numbers. IL-14 was further modified into eight special purposes. The license of IL-14 was also given to East Germany and Czechoslovakia. The Avia organization manufactured Czech IL-14s with 204 Avia-14s that was built between 1956 to 1960. Furthermore, the Avia organization manufactured some military transport named Avia-14T, which is similar to IL-14T and the minor difference was in the wingtip tanks. After some time, the Avia organization built another passenger version with circular windows and wingtip tanks named Super-14. This variant came in 32, 36, and 42 seating capacity. Some new additions were photo survey aircraft, increased nose size for navigation purposes, special mission conversions, and a navigations trainer. For trials of the Walter M601 turboprop engine for the LET L410A, one Avia 14 was used, and the engine was mounted under the Avia 14's nose.
In total 1,123 of IL-14s were built. IL-14 was the main machine and most crucial part of Soviet civil air service, Soviet military, and polar aviation during the post-war period. IL-14 was exported to all Warsaw Pact nations and China, including Afghanistan, Burma, Congo, Cuba, Egypt, Guinea, India, Indonesia, Iran, Mali, Mongolia, Nepal, North Korea, Syria, Vietnam, Yemen, and Yugoslavia. Also a smaller number of aircraft ended in the USA which was acquired by private owners, and some of it still in use for the airshow circuit. Well, aviation lovers, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching till the end, please like the video and subscribe to the channel it'll be very much appreciated. For those watching on other social media platforms but still want to support the channel, please click on the YouTube icon and then like the video it'll really help the video to be loved by the YouTube algorithm. Also let me know if you saw IL-14 in real life in the comments section down below. Thanks again, see you in the next one. Still here? Then feel free to check out the description box I left interesting links for you over there.